Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Megan and today I'm going to be sharing our end of the year review. Now we have about 30-ish days left to our school year out of 180 and so I think at this point it is safe to say I can give you a pretty good review of what we thought of all the different curriculum that we used this school year. So let's get started. Now, as I said, my name is Megan. I am a homeschool mom to six kiddos. My oldest is in seventh grade, and my youngest that is actually homeschooled is in kindergarten this year. So I am just gonna start with our family subjects. I'm gonna jump right in here. We will start with history. History, we used Biblioplan, and it was year two in um, the Middle Ages. We have absolutely loved this year of history. We just, I have shared many times how much we have loved Biblioplan, and that is actually what we're planning to use again next year. I see myself using it for quite some time. It has really been a great fit for us just because it does cater to pr pretty much any age that I do history with. I don't do it with my youngest daughter. Sometimes she'll kind of sit in for when we're reading through the lesson or something like that. But for the most part, I do it with my second grader and up, and it has worked beautifully. I love that there are so many components that I've been able to customize it. It gives me all the read alouds, like things like that. So I'm not searching for those things. And it's also really affordable if you are looking for something that kind of lays it all out for you and caters to every age especially since you can customize it to be exactly what you want it to be as far as do you want to do mapping? Do you want to do timelines? Do you want to have worksheets? Do you want hands-on activities? All of those things you can buy each component to make it really what you need. So Biblioplan has really been a win for our history this year. So definitely would highly recommend that one if you are looking for a history curriculum. Now I did recently do a video on my channel where I compared three pretty popular uh, choices for history that we personally have used. They are all three uh, more of a literature based history and it is comparing Biblioplan, My Father's World, and Story of the World. So I know there are lots of other history programs out there but those are the ones that I am most familiar with in our home. And so I did the comparison on those three because I've gotten a lot of questions about why aren't you using My Father's World anymore? Or are you still using Story of the World? And so it gives that comparison of the three and a little more info. So if you want to see that video, I will link it down in the description below. Okay, so the next subject I want to talk about is science. And... You guys, this one? Okay, so we had a hit and a miss, sort of a miss. I'll, I'll get there when I get there. So first of all, let's talk about the hit, like the good uh, in the science that we used this year, and that would be Apologia's Earth Science. We absolutely loved Apologia's Earth Science this year. Obviously, we're still finishing it out, but it has been an excellent fit. We did choose to use the student notebooks for it this year, and I have really enjoyed them because Earth Science is one of the ones that has been updated recently, <laughs> so the student notebooks are are really great for it. Um, I do honestly wish that I would have actually adapted it to also fit my seventh grader this year. I think it very easily could have fit with my seventh grader, but instead I actually went with Apology as general science for him, and that is kind of our miss for the year. Uh, we actually were really close to completely abandoning it. And uh, I, I've heard mixed reviews on it from others now this year after I chose to do it. Um, <laughs> but for us, it was, it was okay. It was okay. I will say that coming from the Apologia's elementary series to the general science is a really big jump. It is meant to be done more independently, which is wonderful. And when my kids get in about fourth grade, I like to 
encourage them to be as independent as possible in their learning and they do a great job of that so it's nothing new like it's not like they're not used to being independent with things but it was just a big workload and a big jump as far as science goes and so it was just a lot like i said uh my son enjoyed the experiments and things like that so it, it just required a little more involvement from me than i think what it is intended to be which is fine we adapted it and we have continued to use it regardless and he has still learned a lot it's just been a little more difficult for him transition wise to jump into general science I don't want to deter anybody else from using it, but just know that it is, uh, it's a big jump. It's just a big jump. <laughs> okay, let's talk math. This one's easy. Everybody did Christian Light Education for math again, and it was, once again, it was an excellent fit. It is one that I will always and forever come back to. Now, my kindergartner, however, there is no kindergarten level to CLE math. It starts in first grade, and so for her math, I actually did kindergarten math with confidence, and I absolutely loved it, and so did she. It I love the mindset and the approach to the math, especially for a kindergartner. It is very game-based, and it was fun, and it wasn't overwhelming at all. She has learned a ton. Christian Light Math is a great one to ease into, so I think we will probably go ahead and transition into Christian Light Education Level 1 next year for her first grade year, but I do highly recommend um, kindergarten math with confidence. If all the other levels are anything like the kindergarten, it is definitely a curriculum I would recommend. Okay, so the next subject area, I'm actually going to lump anything that falls under language arts into this one. And probably one of the easiest ways for me to go through this one is kind of by kid because I don't use the same thing all the way across the board. I am going to start with uh, first language lessons for the well-trained mind. Not to be confused with the one from Master Books, but for the well-trained mind. Uh, we really enjoyed this one a lot. I took first language lessons and really adapted it so it would be a more interactive kind of thing. We did some rhymes and some clappings and clapping and motions to remember being verbs and all that kind of stuff. And we also notebooked in journals as well. And so that one worked well for us. However, I will say that we actually kind of switched it up halfway through the year for several different reasons, and I'll get to that in just a second. So we did only use first language lessons for the well-trained mind for a little more than halfway through the year, not because there was anything wrong with it. I would definitely use it again, and we have used it several times throughout the years in our homeschool. However, like I said, th I'm going to segue into why we had a change. So let's go with the reason, one of the reasons for the change. So one of my sons that was doing first language lessons for the well-trained mind with us is dyslexic. And we had him fully evaluated. We waited on purpose for the full evaluation. We've always known we were dealing with with dyslexia. However, we had him evaluated later because the documentation is only good for so many years and we wanted it to last. So, he, we had his full evaluation and in that we found out not only does he have dyslexia, but he also has a learning disability in regards to writing. Not the physical handwriting type writing, but actually taking thought and putting it correctly on paper. And so finding out that this was an area of discrepancy for him really made me, number one, I kind of felt bad in all honesty because sometimes I wouldn't say I'm necessarily hard on him, but harder than what I needed to be, I guess, because I didn't realize we were dealing with an actual issue as to why he struggled so much with writing just simple sentences, like getting the thoughts onto paper. Um, and so after finding that out, I really went on the search to try to figure out what super structured um, 
English program would be best for him. So I talked to a few friends of mine and got some input and then investigated those things a little further and I actually ended up switching him to Bob Jones English. So we started with Bob Jones English 3, the third grade level, and it fit amazing for him. You guys, the structure of Bob Jones English, so it's funny because I've never used like a really formalized type uh, curriculum like that. I've never used a Becca or Bob Jones. Well, unless it was like, I've used Bob Jones Science way in the past. But besides that, I've never used it for something like English. And the way that the program is laid out worked so beautiful, beautifully for him. Um, or it is working beautifully for him. And I love the structure of it. So the way that it is structured is you have a whole unit that focuses on a specific grammar skill and it kind of hits it from different directions and goes in a little more depth as the unit goes on. Then the next unit takes that grammar skill and it actually applies it in some way in writing. The writing is very structured, it's very laid out. It is simple yet done very well. Um, and so it has, like I said, worked beautifully for him. And so that was one of the reasons for the change. Uh, because it did require a little bit more hands-on from me, I then switched my daughter who's in second grade to Christian Light Education Language Arts Level 2. It is something I already had on hand previously and so I just pulled that out and she has been working on it independently. It is something she can do completely independent of me and is thriving with. And so, yeah, that is why we had the change with first language lessons. The other thing is my daughter, who is using Christian Light Education for Language Arts, is also using their reading, and it has been excellent for her. Again, very independent. That's kind of where she's at, though. She is, she's always been my more advanced reader and things like that and so it created a little bit of a challenge for her just to learn independently which she really really loves to do and takes in stride and so she did that along with sunlight readers uh the third grade level sunlight readers and she has really really enjoyed those a lot so everything there has worked very well for her um, as I said, the first language lessons for the well-trained mind, there was nothing wrong with it. It just was a uh, situational thing as to why we switched things up. Um, the Also, my other son, I actually ended up having him use the good and the beautiful language arts and that has worked extremely well for him. It has been an excellent fit for him. And then my oldest son, we started out the year doing IEW and also doing just different reading selections. We got to get our feet wet with one of the reader guides that Rachel from Seven and All put out through her curriculum company, Where Do You Learn That? And it was excellent. We will definitely be using a couple more of her reader guides next year. Uh, my oldest son, he started out the year as far as writing using IEW, the medieval history-based writing from, uh, from IEW, and it was great. It was great. However, we did end up straying from that a little bit, not because there was anything wrong with it, but because I wanted him really to have the opportunity to really get into more of the creative writing side of things and really exploring other literature and the styles of literature written by different authors. And so this is where the next thing that we love this year comes into play, and that is redefining school. And I've talked about it a few times over here. I actually did a video on how we approach writing and language arts in the middle school years, and I will link it down below if you're interested. Each month, they study a different form of literature and the author who wrote that form of literature, they get the opportunity to write in that style as well after they have studied it. 
at the end of the month they actually get to do like a little coffee house thing where they share their writing with the other kids that are in the class and it is just really really great so that has been an excellent fit and it has also given him the opportunity to take what he has learned in IEW style of writing and to really apply that in a more creative writing way as well and so it has been a great mixture having the two has been a great mixture so um think that covers everything for language arts. So editing Megan is going to break in here really quick because I did forget one last thing as far as curriculum goes in our like language arts this year and that was all about reading. Now this is what we used with my son who I mentioned had dyslexia. We have been using it the past two years now and it has been great for him. It We are finishing up level four this summer and then he will be done with the whole all about reading series and I just can't recommend it enough. It's a multi-sensory program that really helps the whole reading process just become fun. And so I would highly recommend that one. But if you guys are curious about what we thought about some of the read alouds that we read this year, I will be doing a read aloud review uh, here pretty soon in a few weeks. And so make sure you're subscribed so you stick around for that one. Now let's talk about kindergarten. So kindergarten for my daughter, we did the Get Ready for the Code series and also Christian Light Education uh, Kindergarten 2 as far as like kind of like the reading and phonics stuff. Now for kindergarten, I like to go really gentle with things. I don't want to push my kids into reading before they are actually ready. I want them to have a really firm foundation in phonemic awareness. And so that is really what I've been working on with her because she is a young kindergartner. And so those two things have worked really well for us. Um, the next thing that we used was, of course, Kindergarten Math with Confidence, which I already mentioned previously that we really enjoyed, and then also Gentle and Classical Primer. Now, we absolutely love Gentle and Classical. We have not finished it out. We won't finish it out this year. So, my thought is, you know, we'll probably just carry over where we got. We got about halfway through it because, admittedly, there were a couple of weeks here and there where, oh, shoot, I forgot to do our memory board for gentle and classical it was like one of the things that kind of slipped um, <laughs> uh, when you get in those busy seasons of homeschool and you really just need to focus on like the main parts of things sometimes those extras the things that can be a little extra um, tend to slip a little bit so we weren't as consistent as what I would like to have been with that one However, we did get a little more than halfway through Gentle and Classical Primer. So my thought is we'll just kind of continue it through next year as well. So I absolutely love it. And I would recommend Gentle and Classical to anybody. It's great. And it is something that you can adapt to use parts of with the rest of the family, which is what we did with like the art and the music and um, like the catechisms and the verse memory and all that kind of stuff. So we adapted those things and and then everything else was exclusively hers. So that is that. Now let's move on to Bible. I've got one of the things up here kind of behind me. Uh, we used the Faithopedia from Not Consume Ministries. Now we did not use we did not use the student notebooks. We only used this flip chart. Um, and it has been really good. I love anything that I have ever gotten and used from Not Consumed Ministries. I've absolutely loved. I already know I'm going to be picking up some things when I go to convention here in a few weeks from the Not Consumed booth. Uh, I just love her stuff. She, in my opinion, did a really good job with this. Um, I just wanted to use this as a way to kind of guide us through the Old Testament. It is a like a basic 
apologetics basically for your kids um, and we really enjoyed it. Each day we just read through a different thing on the flip chart. My kids had Bible journals where if there was like a key term or a key verse or something like that, then they would write it down, maybe what the definition of that theological term is, and then they would illustrate or they would write a key verse and illustrate it. We just kept it really simple and it led to so many great conversations. And uh, we also, like anytime there was a verse reference or a passage referenced, then we would go and open up our Bibles and read through that and everything. And so uh, it was a really good fit for us. The last thing I want to talk about is something that we introduced halfway through the school year, and that was Fallacy Detective, which is an early logic curriculum. I actually have it beside me, so I'll pull it out really quick, and I'll explain how we used Fallacy Detective. We're not done with it yet, um, but we will definitely keep it in our morning basket, which is why it's on the shelf. <laughs> um, but the way that we used this is we just read through a different type of fallacy and we just discussed it and then we would go through and I would read the questions and, and ask them and they would answer and we would discuss things and stuff like that. So we just kept it really informal and fun. It really piqued my kids' interest. Uh, and so this is definitely something I think would be great for people's morning baskets in their homeschool. Not necessarily to do formally because it does have like more like questions and stuff like this, but to do kind of the way that we did. Just read through it real informally, have fun with it, discuss it, things like that. So this was a good exposure to the idea of logic. I think that is pretty much everything. I hope. If I've forgotten something, you guys feel free to call me out down in the comments down below. I don't have everything laid out in front of me. <laughs> Otherwise, I would be picking it up and telling you about each one. But that's a lot of things to try to gather in one video. And I don't want to put it all up when I'm done. So that's why I didn't gather it all this time. I just popped up the pictures for you guys so you would know what I was talking about each time. But if there is something that you guys know we did and I left out of the video, feel free to ask down below. Also, let me know down in the comments what was a hit and a miss for you this homeschool year. I don't feel like we really had that many misses. There was a few things, um, but for the most part, I feel like it's pretty easy to adapt things to what you need in your homeschool. And that's what I love about homeschooling is just to have the autonomy to be able to adapt things for what your needs are. And that is a beautiful, beautiful byproduct of homeschooling, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll see you on future videos. Thanks so much guys and have a blessed day.